All right, I wanted to talk about a level conversion uh, today. Um, I have a need for it in a particular circuit that I'm doing. And so here's an example of level conversion. We have a, a five volt signal that we need to convert to a 3.3 volt signal. And that's what's happening here. We're at two volts per division, so two, four, two, four, five, and two and three in a little bit. So yeah, there we go. So um, how do you go about converting and going between these two, especially bi-directional, all right? So, um, let's see here. I was gonna draw some pictures, but then I found some online, so we'll just use theirs. Uh, this is actually from DigiKey. DigiKey has uh, a basics. They, they, they cover certain topics and have white papers on certain things in it, talking about level conversion. And we're gonna do that with this circuit here. We have an FET, and then we have a low voltage side and a high voltage side. So this will be our five volt supply, okay, plus five, and this will be our 3.3 volt, our 3.3 volt side, okay. And then we have this FET here, and so let's think about that. If the FET is on, then things can go back and forth either direction, okay. It, it, it's like a, a with well, something like a two. 2 ohm resistor, 2 5 ohm resistor, something like that. It, 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 it'll conduct in either direction. And um, it's got this production diode in there, and that will become, that will come in handy for how this circuit works. So uh, this paper is written around a BS170, which isn't a great choice. Um, it will work, but what, there's a better device. And so that's what the video today will be about, is, is that other device. Um, so how does this thing work? Like I said, if this thing is on, then things can just go, go back and forth. Um, if it's off, then this side will be high and this side will be high. Uh, this one will be five volt high and this one will be 3.3 volt high. All right. So if we think about this thing, um, the, uh, FET's gate is always at 3.3 volts. Okay. So the gate is always going to be 3.3 volts. So if the gate to source is uh, above its threshold, then this thing will turn on, okay? If it's on, then things can go back and forth. And if it's off, then things are, are both high. So if we think about the, uh, let's say we're going in, let's say we're going in this direction and we are, we are outputting a high, so it's 3.3 it's volts. So now we have 3.3 volts here, but we also have 3.3 volts here. We have 3.3 volts here. We have 3.3 volts here. So this thing can't turn on. It's, it's got zero volts across the gate. So it's going to be off. So if we're outputting a high here, this thing is off. What will be over here? A high. Because this thing's off. It'll be pulled high. So that's the way the high state works. What if this is low? If we have low here, we have zero volts here. Now we have 3.3 and zero. We have three volts across the uh, FET. It'll turn on. And so this low here will go through this five ohm resistor and it'll pull this side low. All right. So everything works in this direction. Now, what about in this direction? Okay. Let's say over in this direction, uh, we have a high. All right. And over here, uh, it's an, it's inputting, so this is high impedance, so this, this pull-up hill will bring this to 3.3. So the other side will be high as well. So if we have a high over here, we'll have a high over here. Now the only tricky thing about this circuit is, what if we have a low here? So what if we have zero volts here? How do we get, how do we get this thing to turn on? All right, all right, well we have zero volts here. There's a diode here. So if you have zero volts here, you're gonna have 0 0.7 0 volts over here, all right? Zero here, you have 0 0.7 volts over here because of this diode. Uh, it, it's going to charge through this 3.3 volts, okay? So we'll have 3.3 volts coming in here through this resistor, and then goes through that diode to zero volts. So you have a current path through here. So we have a diode drop and we'll have 0.7 volts here. If we have 0.7 volts here and 3.3 volts here, that will turn on this FET, all right? All right, but there's a problem with this 3.3 and this 0.7. If you take 3.3 and subtract 0.7, you get 2.6. So 
across the gate, we have 2.6 volts, okay? So we have to make sure when we buy our FET, it comes on at 2.6 volts, okay? We want to make sure we have an FET that'll come on at 2.6 volts. Some FETs might only come on at 5 volts, right? And they're not, they're not going to do us any good. All right. So let's look at the BS170. Um, the BS170. I have a data sheet. All right. So the BS170 is here. DigiKey says this is just fine. So if we take a look at the data sheet, um, the... the thing that we're going to be interested in is what's called the threshold voltage. It's the voltage at which the thing starts to turn on, okay? And here is the uh, gate threshold voltage. Now, it says that a typical is 2.1 volts. Well, how much do we have? 2.6. So obviously it's going to turn on, right? What about worst case? A, a good engineer always designs for worst case. In worst case, it's 3 volts. Well, we only have 2.6 volts. And the thing won't start to turn on. It will not work very well. All right. So if we get if we get typical transistors, it's going to work. But if we get really, you know, the far end of the spectrum, three volt uh, devices, it's not going to work very well. Right? Another way to look at that is with this diagram here. This is the transfer characteristics, and it says here, this is how much current you can draw. This is how much the gate to source. So as you increase the gate to source, it will start to come on. It will start to conduct. And where does it start to conduct? Well, it's starting to conduct here around 2 to 3 volts, okay? And uh, so that's kind of right where we are. So it's marginally going to be okay. It's just kind of marginal, okay? So is there a better device that you should use? Okay, here's a device, it's called the BSS138, okay? And even in the description here, it says logic level. What does that mean? An N-channel logic level of FET. It, it seems kind of strange, logic level. But uh, if we read the data sheet and we go to the thing that we're interested in, this uh, gate threshold voltage looks. Even in the worst case, it's of one and a half volts. So this thing is a superstar for turn on characteristics. Only one and a half volts will start to turn this thing on, okay? And if we take a look at that diagram again, the, um, let's see here. This um, source, gate to source voltage, you can see it's starting to turn on right here, a volt and a half and then it's going up. So, you know, where are we? Well, we're way over here at 2.6 2 volts, right? And so this thing's gonna be work really, really good. Now, why is this important, okay? Um, it's to make sure that it always works under all cases. Um, one other thing that we will be interested in is how hard does it turn on? What, um, what's the resistance? And the data sheets are a bit misleading. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, so, if you go over to the data sheet and you read uh, resistance, you say, well, worst case, it's 5 ohms. Well, that sounds pretty good, 5 ohms. But look at the conditions. The con test condition is 10 volts gate to source. We don't have 10 volts gate to source. We have 2.6 volts, right? So how much, how much is the homage when we have 2.6, right? Well, then you have to kind of look at some data sheet curves. And here we go. So they don't give us 2.6. They give us uh, 4 volts. At 4 volts, um, we're up here around 3, uh, around 3 ohms, right? But what about 2.6? It's kind of like off the map. We're really not quite sure how good of a conductor it is at 2.5 ohms. 2.6 volts. It really doesn't tell us. What about this part here that I claim is a little bit better? Uh, I think it has a graph too. Yeah. So here's its graph. And look, it's characterized at 2.5 volts. So at 2.5 volts, we're guaranteed around uh, less than 3 ohms, right? So that remember that other data sheet, the, the, it's 
lowest voltage was four volts. Look at four volts. This thing's this thing's a superstar down here at one 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 and a half ohms, right? But at two and a half, it's still doing really really good. That other part was not doing good at all at two and a half volts. So this is the part to use. Okay, the BS138. It was made for this. Um, now, if you go online and you go to like AliExpress, you can get these level converter boards for, oh gosh, they're like super cheap. They're like, I think you get five of them for like a buck and a half. <laughs> they're like super cheap. Um, so let's open up one here. You get a little board and you get a couple of headers, right? So it's like, this is like 20 cents, really. And look, you get, you can't see that. It's too small. It's too small. Let me, let me come down. There we go. All right. You get four of those transistors. And this means that you have four level converters on one board. Um, you have a high side and you have a low side. And it has that circuit that I showed you. It has the FET plus two resistors. There's a resistor at the top and a resistor at the bottom of, of each FET. So one on the high side, one on the low side. So, so there you go. If you want to do your level conversion, you can just buy one of these for 20 cents and be done with it. Okay. So that's what I have over here. Um, I'm using one of those little boards there on my circuit and um, getting a nice, a nice level conversion. I'm going in the high side and coming out on the low side, uh, but it would work just as well the other way. All right, so these 20 cent parts with four FETs, um, what, which device do they put in here? They put in a 138, a BBS 138. So uh, yeah, these are made exactly the way you want them to be made. They're using that really, really good, that really, really good uh, FET. So there you go. So you can either build your own if you have like a breadboard situation or on a, on a laid out PC board, and just put in a FET and some, uh, some resistors and away you go.